I think other, other weeks have been recorded. Ah, okay. So this is quite exciting. So this is why you're doing this lecture today. Today's lecture, um, or well, the live one? No, we've done some live lectures, but the ah. tutorials that follow afterwards have, um, no, they've always been live, sorry. The, present, the submissions that they've had to do in terms of assignments, right. some of them have been recorded. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am excited. I'm reading the chat here. Yes, I'm seeing. <laughs> mm. Good. I'm also looking forward to today. I'll wait till we get a few more, Tammy, to introduce you properly. Sure. But um, the fact that we have a guest speaker today means I can sit back with a cup of coffee and make some notes myself. So I'm a fellow student, ah. which is always, it's always fun. Now the nerves are on me. <laughs> no, they're not on you. I'm sharing, I'm sharing, um, I'm sharing the pressure with you, if there is any. Yeah. All right, good. So the numbers are coming up. Yeah, I get to chill a bit, a little bit. I'm still moderating and uh, I will be fielding your questions, I guess, uh, or, or sending them Tamara's way. Yeah, if I can answer. I hope I can answer. I'm sure you can. Yeah. 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 Students, I, I, you can tell that I'm a bit nervous as well, right? So. <laughs> You know what? Over the years, I've um, done different kinds of presentation, as, as you would have, yeah. um, Tam. And, um, you know, they're in so many different settings. But I, I always feel a slight, um, a slight kind of nervousness, a little, a little bit on edge before every I you know, start to uh, start every to time. Yeah. On a separate note, I heard that um, Prince, the singer, he actually had really bad stage fright, which is why he used to take um, some, whatever the medication was that yeah. ultimately led to his demise. Yeah. He um, used to have to take things to reduce his anxiety. So, you know, it if it can happen to Prince, it can happen to us. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's see how many people do we have. 18 so far. Okay, we'll give people some, some time. Sure, sure. They often start to um, trundle in about now. Right. All the students here are the good ones. They're the ones yeah, that get, I, here, that get I, here early. I opened it at about 12.30 and people were joining at 12.30. So I'm like, really? wow, that's great. Wow. Sometimes it's good online, so you avoid any technical issues. You know, some oh. people have a problem joining. Right, with, true. With any other issue. So online is a whole different dynamic. Yes, yes. I've been noticing that over these um over these weeks. Yeah. I think only one week I had a an issue connecting. And now um I'm in South. As you know, it started raining, so I don't yeah. I hope that doesn't affect my connection. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh. Priya's having the same uh issue, right, yeah. Right. It was a kind of a squally shower that started. Same here. I'm in central. Well, I'm close to Piaco, so yeah. lots of rain here all day. Right. And before we get started, students, any questions? Does anyone have anything that they want to ask? No questions as yet. Oh, wow. It's rainy in the west. It's rainy in the south. Okay, someone's asking if they can go over the time limit. Okay, so the individual presentations are really meant to be five minutes. Uh, I mean, typically we say plus or minus 30 seconds. Yeah, so I'm seeing Priya's asking if she can push it to a minute. I mean, I would rather you, you know, try to keep it within the time. That way everyone gets the, you know, the same amount of time. So plus or minus 30 seconds. So if you did a short presentation at four minutes, 30 seconds, it's not a big issue. Um, the only reason I think the time is important um, is because, well, it's for a number of reasons. One is because it's professional. And um, as, as we'll hear today, you know, in the business context, more than anywhere else, I suppose, time is money. And, you know, everyone has things that they need to, to be doing. So I think it's that kind of lesson. But also, um, you know, it's just important that you kind of condense your message. I think the time limit shapes how you frame your message and really gives an indication of, you know, your effectiveness within that time. 
So all of those things are important. Um, can you add additional content like a video? Yes, yeah, you can use a video. I mean, the idea is that you keep that within the, within the time limit. Denisha, how Oh, it's 30, okay. That's okay, yeah, that's fine, it's 30 seconds. Okay, so you want to end with a video, Denisha? Yeah? Okay. All right, sure, yes. Yeah. How are we doing? 30. Okay, we can give it a little moment again. How was your morning, Tam? Good. Not too bad at all. Just the rain. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, there's, there's good and bad, isn't there, being yeah. um, doing everything online. Yeah. You don't have to kind of hit the roads as often. But Which then is great. Yeah. Which is I great. think so. Yeah. Then we get this different dynamic of meeting online and doing things online. Yeah. But when you're working from home, you could suffer from cabin fever, which oh, gosh, I find yeah. I have been. And I just right. want to jump in my can actually dry. Yeah, get out a bit. Yeah. Sure. And working in PJs is great. I'm sure that's why half of them, well, everybody has their video off. They so. do. They <laughs> do. They do. You know, I think we've had some issues in the past with um, bandwidth and that right. kind of thing. Yeah. And also when people have their videos on, I don't know if it affects... Does it affect the overall quality of video? Sometimes. I, don't know. I mean, sometimes if they have their audio on as well, there's a lot of feedback. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, how would you like um, questions today? Would you want them throughout the presentation or? They can be throughout the presentation. I feel that, yeah. that that allows for more dialogue. It allows for more interesting conversation because I prefer it to be more of a, um, a conversation you know, in between. So I could always pause, you could always stop me if you see a question, because if I have the slides up, I'm not going to see yeah. it. But okay. feel free to ask me, you know, any questions. Okay. Oh my gosh, sorry, Sadira. That's my... Okay, so I actually messed up some times as I was um, sending students uh, a notice about when they're presenting. I meant after the lecture. I'm sorry, that's absolutely ridiculous of me. I put 1 to one thirty. Um, yeah, sorry, my fault. We have, we have the lecture today, and then we'll be going into our presentations. Right. I hope. Um, Luke, do you have people in um, the group WhatsApp? Could you could you just check for me that they they understood that? That was my error. And that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's... I was now actually clearing that up with them. They were oh. in the blackboard room. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Tell them everything. Yeah, sorry. So we have this lecture for an hour and then we have these presentations ah. after and, I, and I, I sent out an email with an erroneous time in it. So Luke's my, um, he's the tutorial rep for my group. So he's going to let them know. Okay, so I think we may have some other teachers here as well. There are some, I um, hope, hope they're able to make it. Are they on their way? There's Aaliyah, Jonathan, Jessica, Megan and Bernadine. I'm hoping they can come along. All right, Tam, do you think we should get started? Because yeah. I know you probably have a, a time limit and students will want to hear, they will they want to absorb the wealth of information that you have to share with us today <laughs> and then kind of calm off for, for five minutes before they go in and do their own presentations. All right, so let me do the formal thing and introduce um, our guest speaker today. So welcome everyone to week 10 of oral communication. I'm really pleased to have our guest speaker today, Ms. Tamara Chaitar. Um, she has spent years working in corporate environments in different capacities, I understand as a marketing professional and in other professional ways. Shall we say how many years or is that a secret? No, at all. <laughs> I, always, I always say it's over 20 years. Over oh, wow. Okay, years. great. Over 20 years. So yeah. she brings um, a significant amount of kind of hands-on experience and also she has an MBA in executive management, is it? It executive is an MBA in specializing in executive leadership. Executive leadership. Yeah. Great. And so she's going to be talking to us today about the intersection between communication 
and business and um, inform us about uh, some of the distinctions um, for the business presentation, which I'm really excited to, to hear about. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And it's great meeting you all virtually. I mean, COVID-19 has given this whole new dynamic to presentations, which we'll touch on during the presentation, of course. Um, I, I have been in, I work for a company now called the Caribbean Climate Smart Accelerator, where we're focusing on climate change, but I, I do um, research and team coordination and a lot of project management. So, um, and only here for about six months, but my background a lot has been in marketing and technology. So let's begin. Um, I'd like to start by saying that, you know, presentation skills are going to be so important to so many of you. So many of you are students, but I'm sure many of you work as well. So it's important to both your individual success and your business success. So what the presentation before I start, it's very, very simple. It's very simplified presentation because let's be honest, giving a presentation is extremely nerve wracking, which uh, I'm seeing from your chat here, you have to deliver this presentation in front of your, your group. And um, nerves are a huge deal. Uh, uh, I'm also on the side, I'm on the side of a musician. So that has helped me um, become a better presenter in business. You know, being on a stage, you are on a stage. You are gonna uh, be acting when you're absolutely terrified sometimes. And I've been doing it for 20 years and it is still terrifying each time. Like. Dr. Shepard mentioned Prince does it. I mean, I'm not, I'm off the drugs, but you know, you have to, you really have to do whatever you can um, to calm those nerves to get your message across. So let's, let me just share my screen so we can begin. The tab's eluding you. Okay, here we go. Ah, there you <laughs> yeah. Go. Um, let me put my slideshow. Right. Right. Can everybody see my screen? Well, Gender, you're going to have to tell me um, if people are having problems or not because I can't see the chat, right? Okay, right. I'll keep an eye on it. Yes, people are saying they can. Okay, great. Fantastic. So, your aims and objectives. You have to, let me just get my video off because it's quite distracting. Um, sorry guys, this is one of the things that I have to get accustomed to when I'm presenting to minimize you guys, right? So um, the aims and objectives, Your, a presentation is to inform to educate, motivate, persuade, sell something, train, use for training, and internal communication. So you're providing information, teaching a skill. These are your types of pre presentation. You're reporting progress, whether it's figures, and it can be very, very monotonous sometimes, and it's important to prepare so it isn't. So you're selling a product or service and you either you're making a decision. So you're trying to convince your audience. Um, so let me tell you, let me go back to the last slide. Subject and, pre and preparation. You have to research and have facts to supplement your speech. You have to create an outline before you start. And once you've prepared your presentation, don't be afraid to revise your presentation. It's important because you are the center of attention for every single presentation that you do. Everybody's gonna focus on you. So rehearse in front of a mirror. You may be very surprised when, if you record yourself, if you look at your, if you hear your voice, if you see what gestures you make, it's all very, very important when you deliver a presentation. This will ensure you, you flow and you help eliminate any, sometimes you go, uh, uh, 
you know, just filler words because we, we haven't practiced. And I can attest to many failures to that, you know, and we, I think we've all been there. Everybody that has had to have a presentation, we've all had those nightmare stories. And I'd love you to share some of them if you can, you know, feel free because I, I love to hear the disasters so I don't feel as bad. So, and the good things are great too, but it makes for great conversation. Um, no one is impressed by, by a presentation that rambles. Rambling happens when you're, you're self-indulgent and you're disorganized. Be your, pu your purpose is something you have to decide on before you start. What do you want the audience to walk away with? So are you going to motivate? Do you want to convince someone of this is the best product that I have? Why am I, why should I buy this? Your enthusiasm if you are not interested in your subject, then no one else stands a chance. You have to bring that enthusiasm to your talk and don't be afraid to let go. Even if, even if it feels overdone at first, it will help get your audience excited about hearing what you have to say. Media. Now, a lot of people, and I've, I've done it before when, I've been, when I was inexperienced, a lot of people just use media and their slides to tell their story, their entire story. They use it as their notes pages. They, but it can, that, that is a misuse of your PowerPoint. You have to know your subject. Just, just make it be very brief points and you have to be able to speak on your topics. So it's just to enhance. Media is just to enhance. Don't let the slides be your notes. Prepare. Let me just change my slide because I think I'm rambling. Right. Um, it's don't let those slides be your notes at all, because people some how many of you have been in a lecture where all they do is just read slides. And if all you could have wasted, you could have just taken that hour of your time and have it in an email. Right. So I've wished that many, many times. And I know Dr. Shepard is not that type of lecturer. <laughs> so. Um, don't let the slides be your notes. And it's okay to look down as well. Make your notes. It's okay to look down at your notes. Once your notes aren't the same, at, 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 don't stare down at your notes, but don't make that be what's on your slide. Um, and be prompt about it. It's okay to say, I don't know. Now, a lot of people and a lot of presentates, a lot of people that present don't like to say, I don't know. But it's okay. You explain when why you don't know. You can always take somebody's information after, tell them, give them your email address, take their email address, find the answer to that question and answer eventually. But because if you don't know, just don't be, let it be dead silence. Um, Tam, if it's not um, going to throw you off, can I ask a quick question? Sure, sure. Um, is it possible to have slides um, in a business presentation that you think are too sparse? And actually don't have enough information is that yes. is that is that a possibility it, it is a possibility <clears throat> but once once you fill that space with verbiage i think mm. that's gonna you're, you're, you're gonna be okay because yeah. i'll tell you 50 percent of your audience are going to be introverted and 50 percent are going to be extroverted mm. so a lot of people um most Has, people you, have you found that even in a business environment that yes. you actually yes okay. yeah i mean I, i've always i've always been under the impression that business people are well, stiff. Um, super confident super confident you know they're kind of out there and able to you know kind of um what's the what's the expression sell ice to eskimos you know they have this ability to kind of command a crowd and that kind of thing but but in your experience in the no i in my experience has always been a balance actually I, mm. i've 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 met ex ceos that are great but they're terrible at public speaking mm. uh, or terrified at it you know i've met people that are so great at it but with practice I really believe practice is your thing. Um, even right. when I have to perform in a band, I mean, I always know, you can always tell when, when somebody ratches a performance mm. or when somebody has practiced. So, right. I, and I always hated to hear myself. You, and, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. To look at yourself is the hardest thing to do. But I'll tell you, it'll sure help in a presentation. When you right. see what you've done, sometimes, like, did I put, do that with my hand? Why am I scratching my head? You mm. know? you are not going to know because it's sometimes it's such an unconscious thing. 
Right. You know, so where your question, coming back to your question, um, when I say 50% or uh, it could be, the ratio could be different, but sure. there, there's a mix of your introverts and your extroverts. Mm -hmm. Extroverts are going to love interaction. They're going to love you asking them a question. They're going to love an exercise, but an introvert is going to love you to just hit them with verbiage. You mm -hmm. know, the important thing is balance balance your slides, you know, balance your, and I'll get to knowing your audience because that's extremely important in a business presentation to know exactly who you are delivering your presentation to who's in your audience. Right. Yeah. On, on that point of interaction, I was thinking that perhaps a business presentation, um, a little bit like uh, an academic presentation, perhaps, is always going to have a kind of a question and answer afterwards. There are always yes. going to be questions. Always. Right. So it strikes me that that's, that's one of the uh, kind of key things to know about the, this kind of presentation, that there will be some interaction because people will always want more information. It's kind of designed, I guess, that way. Yes. Maybe. Mm, okay. Where I found that, that also in sales pitches, Sometimes you have uh, uh, maybe a half an hour, even after you ask those questions, where you have a bit of a social gathering, whether you, whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch. So it allow people to, it allows people to stay. So mm. maybe some people, again, introverted people aren't going to ask you questions outright on right. your product. Introverted people are want to going to want to talk to you after. Got you. You know, mm. so it's important to have that time at the end to even know your audience even after the end. You as a presenter, depending on your aim and your purpose, you have to allow for that. You have to allow engagement with your audience even after the fact. Depending on if you want to sell something, mm. sell even and convince people of something. And they're right. going to want, they're not going to want, some people just don't want to talk about the issues they're having within their organization in the public. Mm, got you. Yeah. Yeah. That's why communication is such an important thing. You know, you got to really figure people out. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Confidence. Now that's something that some, some people say we could fake and, and I'll, I will tell you about something. Um, Amy Cuddy, who is, I, I have a short video of her in a little bit. Um, she's a professor at Harvard and you know that everybody I'm sure has heard the statement, fake it until you make it. Right. But what she has said and what I totally agree with is fake it until you become it. Right. Because fake it until you make it. It's sort of not genuine and it paints you as a little bit not sincere, but sincerity comes across in your delivery. So confidence, actually, you will build that confidence again with practice and knowing your content. Passion passion I and I come back to it it could be all-encompassing as well that passion for what you you have to believe in your message you have to believe in your product and I would tie it into something okay how many of you have insurance how many of you believe in insurance or think it's a waste of money so many people in my career have I have said, it's a waste of money. When am I going to get sick? Um, that's, what do I need that for? What do I need critical illness for? Well, I'm in my 40s. So, you know, it's, a, it's something that I need. But convincing yourself, convincing someone by having that empathy hmm. and understanding for, uh, of what they're going through when it regards their health, and when you speak, if you're going to sell insurance, when you speak from a place that you are sincere and passionate about what you're selling, it totally comes across and it, it's money in your pocket as well. Yeah. If you have to look at it like that. I, I see some people have, um, have expressed that maybe it's a, a waste of money. Yes. Uh, Trust me. I thought it when I was younger. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, so. it's, but the convincing of again, so if you're selling insurance, if I'm an insurance salesman and you have, you must have some family member or friend that has been affected with their health. And mm. then what are you gonna fall back on? But also um, it's, it's building your credit. You can use your insurance uh, policy to buy a house. 
you can in to to finance so many other things in your life you use right. it as a saving sometimes you you tack on fifty dollars let's say that you forget about and in 10 years you don't even realize you have this big saving of money so i mean that's from my experience but trust me i thought it always was a waste of money yeah but that's i think when, I I think in some cases, like um, car insurance, for example, yes. um, I'm trying to think, I don't know if it's actually a legal requirement, but I know that obviously if you're in an accident and you don't have insurance, yeah, it is a legal requirement. It is a legal requirement. Yes. So there you go. So there are ways in which, I mean, obviously, all, I think many uh, insurance policies feel like a waste of money until you absolutely need them. Yes. Um, and, then, yeah. and then you realize, you know, the, the problem of not having it but i but i understand the point where people say it's a waste of money yeah, um yeah. maybe you can tell us insurance salesmen i mean and when you come to the great ones and and i've worked with really good ones right so inspired and they totally convince you and you want to give them all your money when they're done but mm. that's just because they believe in what they're saying they absolutely right. believe and i mean there's certain policies that you think like oh my god that's just such a waste of my time but health. I actually have an insurance policy. Right. Oh. No, I am. Um, it was the UE Gill Fest and Unitrust came. And I I always wanted to have like an investment. And lo and behold, I ended up leaving a booth with an insurance policy. So I, I thought it was a good investment. And right. every I put in money because I'm thinking in the future and I'm not just studying what's happening right now. With gate and everything. So Yeah. I, I really don't know. Um, Kimberly, right. can I can I ask a quick question? When you actually yes, work, sir. because because we're talking about the um, communication, when that policy was uh, introduced to you, um, was it that you were already thinking that that's something you wanted to do, or was it a persuasive presentation um, that really kind of tipped you over the edge to to going ahead and I, agreeing? I to think do it? it was both. I wanted to do it, but I never got a chance. But the way how the woman was um, when she was presenting the difference. Um, packages, you know, that just gives me like the extra push to be like, why not? And I went ahead with it. Yeah, I, I suspect, um, I mean, I don't know, but I suspect one of the ways in which um, a kind of business presentation can go when you have a sales, uh, a sales pitch to do is that what you actually do is talk about the implications of that product rather than the item itself. Um, in advertising, they do the same kind of thing. They sell the lifestyle rather than the chocolate bar or the shampoo. They kind of try and um, create a bigger vision for what that product can mean in your life right. in order to, in order to um, kind of be persuasive. I think that's one of the key, key techniques that they might use. Yes, yes, definitely. So right. a, good, a, a good, I mean, I've had where... Okay, I'll, I'll go on to my other point because I'm looking at the time. So, right. So knowledge of, about your subject. I mean, I have just started a new job once and I was supposed to give a, a presentation on every single product that the company delivered. And my slides were like, I spent all the time doing slides and they were over 60 slides. My presentation was over to two hours and my actual knowledge of understanding those products, I spent just just doing it, doing my slides, you know, um, and not focusing enough time on my actual knowledge of the product. So when it came to presenting, I'm presenting my slides. I have every I have the information. But when people ask questions. I was at a total loss. It was a total disaster for me because I did not spend the time knowing my my product. So make sure you know what you're talking about before it's very important because you can't ratchet it with your slides, right? It shows. Um, time sensitivity. Make sure you keep checking. You check the clock. You time. That's why practice is so important. It is time sensitive. When you're in business, everybody needs to get to that different meeting. Everybody else, like Rajendra says, it, it, time is money. Make sure you're clear. Make sure your message is clear. And you will, you will, and if you have friends that can listen to you as well before that, before you present, it's always good to have some feedback. Right, so these are key points to remember. Remember your role. Your role is to communicate that idea and give your audience something 
to walk away with. You, you, you need to leave them with something. Knowing your audience, make sure, and we'll touch on, on other slides, know who your audience is. For a business presentation, it's hardly likely you're just going to have hey, somebody is giving a presentation on this topic and people off the street are walking in. You will know your audience before and have an idea of what company, what type of business they're coming from, and that kind of thing. So give people a reason to care. Why should I listen to you? Why is this product important? What is it going to save me? How is my business going to improve? Think about visuals. Now, Again, I, I'm saying again, we're a very visual society. If you can use really great graphics that are great and to the point to make your message clearer, that's going to be fantastic. Make an impression. Make an impression with your passion and being who you are. Interaction is the key. Now, COVID-19, and we were talking about this yesterday, Rajendra, has created a whole different dynamic about interaction and how you feed off your audience. Um, I, I'm a very perceptive person regarding body language, so I tend to feed off my audience when you're on a stage. But COVID-19 and on Zoom, I can't read any of you guys, really, unless you give me something in that chat, you know? And it's, it's a lot of companies now are reverting to this model. Google is allowing people to permanently work from home now. But it's, it's sort of the new normal, and people are saying this is not going to be forever. But you, we are going to have to find ways where we innovate to make this a little bit more exciting. And how are we going to, how are we going to interact with our audience? Um, be balanced. Um, expect the unexpected. Now, this is my favorite one. Um, in that expect, I'm sure many of you have horror stories when you have to present online right? Um, whether it be your internet not working, whether it be your kids coming in when you least expect it, or your mom knocking at your door and shouting at you to take out the garbage. I have some crazy ones, but I'd love to hear your, um, can, can anybody want to share something with me that's funny, that could be embarrassing, it could be great. What is that dynamic that you have, that new dynamic from schooling at home, can you share? Does anyone want to share that with me? Miss, I have one. Sure, great. Um, I have a lot of younger siblings, and it's when I have classes, it's kind of hard to, to, to speak because one time I was speaking, and my sister just came out and exclaimed something really loud, and I was like, oh my god, did anybody hear that? So it's an issue with me, and as we speak, we have a presentation after, so I'm like worried. Let them come and like just mess me up. So, I mean, that's how to do it, right? Too. Right, right. It's a new normal. Yes. Um, to be honest, I was list I read an article today about some problem in the um, UK Labour Party, um, and um, someone made a an angry speech. Um, they were it was a Zoom meeting, and she made an angry speech, and she was staging a walkout. And apparently, there was an an agonising minute where she was trying to find the leave button because she was trying to uh, leave the meeting and make a political point, And it was you know a disaster, you know, disaster, disaster yeah. in that way. Yeah. Um, a couple of people have put things in the chat. Um, baby crying in the background while the mic right. is on. Um, and then you oh, forget that the mic is on sometimes. Right, and then dogs or animals in the background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all of that yeah, kind of it's stuff. Trini, it's, a, it's a very Trini thing. And, and I think I have one of the most Trini things that you could think about because I'm sitting here and, and I just started this new job. I really want to make a great impression. And my wind, I sit right next to my window and at the back of my house, my neighbors have some agricultural land. And I have dogs. And in the midst of me making my point, there's a chicken on the wall that is about to fly into my yard with my dog patiently waiting for it to do so. So I had mm. to stop the meeting and I'm like, how do I explain this to my boss? You know, but yeah, that's, 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 I have many of those stories. Yeah. We have a couple of other Trini ones. Um, someone whacking the grass. Yeah. Which, which often happens here yeah. by me. Uh, neighbors doing buildings, building stuff like pounding nails, yeah, the grass right. whacking is. I, so, I also get I also get music from um from guys oh, on the on the corner. You know how I love that. I, they I, start they start a mini mini lime just as you're about to. The sarcasm, how I love. 
music. Um, it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, right. Music at all hours. Um, I don't know why people don't love headphones like I do. But yeah. um, so we've spoken about expecting the unexpected on a Zoom call. But mm. how about expecting the unexpected when you're actually presenting in an auditorium, let's say. So it's very important that you know where you're speaking before. It's good to familiarize yourself if you don't know. Technology is something that fails a lot of times. So make sure your technology, make sure your laptop is compatible with your projector. Make sure everything is up and working because it's likely, yes, you'll think, oh, they'll probably have a tech person there. But it's likely that nobody's going to have a clue how to operate it. So that has happened before. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, in this... Um... Uh, idea of expecting the unexpected with technology. Have you ever had uh, a situation where you've watched a presentation go ahead and somebody hasn't had access to their slides, so they've had to do it without? Yes, or... I have had it. I okay. have it. I, I feel very sorry for the presenter because depending on, again, your practice, if you mm. have a practice, how are you going to even know uh, what to say? Yeah. How are you how are you gonna even in, in the event of something like that? In the event of let's say even on Zoom that something can't work, you're gonna have to talk to it. Yeah. Right. Um mm. so it's very, very important to familiarize and familiarize walking your your stage. Walk it. Sometimes you trip on wires that you don't that are not supposed to be there. I've seen it happen many times. Mm. Uh, your microphone is not working, something like that. It, it's it always happens. And always be prepared for Murphy's Law that whatever will go wrong, will go wrong. That's why you yeah. prepare for it and have that big smile on your face when it does go wrong. Because it does help the audience. It helps the audience remain calm. Yeah. Well, I have a suggestion for that, actually. Yeah, sure. Um, there were, well, what I would normally do, especially if I have a presentation to make for my department, I would make sure to email a copy of my slides to my supervisor mm. and what I do is that I have my slides up on my desktop ah. so that in the event either one of them has an issue it shouldn't really create that much of a problem yeah but I do hear you on the fact where you know it is good for you to you know not necessarily memorize but be that familiar with the material in yeah. the event that something does go wrong you know but that yeah. is the that's the type of precaution that I usually take. So yeah, definitely do like get that. flustered when something unexpected happens as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, that's true. You know, Trinis, we're, we're easygoing people most of the time. We're, we'll understand because it happens all the time in the society. You know, things go wrong. So you got to know how to play it off as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just jump to the other slide. Sure. Um, right, so how do you know what your audience wants? Uh, and this is an important one where I think that is, um, so um, Rajendra, could you just, I, I need to, so sorry about that. I need That's to okay. probably put you on hold for one minute. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while we're in the room, guys, um, one of the thing, one of the things that we have uh, spoken about over the course of um, this kind of lecture series, we, we've done we've done this class on knowing your audience, and um, I suspect in business there's a there is a kind of different level of knowing, a different requirement um, for for knowing. Right, and, I'm back. Um, Sorry, guys. Oh, hi there. When, yeah. I, when I'm talking about expect the unexpected, my mm. house my housekeeper is knocking on the door outside and oh. locked. <laughs> so. See, Tara, first the, world uh, um, experience example. there. Yes. So, mm -hmm. and, and it happens all the time when you're on Zoom in a meeting. You know, somebody, some uh, a DHL is outside. Right. Somebody two or three mm. just drops in and they're knocking on your door and you have no clue. So, you know, we, yeah. we're we not a society that usually calls in uh, before. Do you, do you think the, um, the, you know, moving presentations to online then, um, actually allows for a, um, a certain degree of informality, even in business presentation, or, or, do, or do people still try and maintain this kind of very uh, strict version of professionalism? I think, again, with that expect the unexpected, I think COVID-19 mm -hmm. has pushed people sort of in a, in a way to, to address these things. 
Mm. Um, yes, I think in years to come, people are going to be talking about how crazy this this time has been and adjusting because, I mean, I have a boss that has a two-year-old. And right. although she has childcare during the day, sometimes that two, two-year-old, they're going to, and she's the CEO. And she's, we're on a call maybe with the president of, of Costa Rica or something like that. And her mm. two-year-old will not understand or care yes. about your bloody meeting, you know? <laughs> so, right and they too. show you very clearly, I'm the boss here, you know? Mm. So I think it's going to be, it's going to make for lots of interesting conversation. But yeah. again, it'll show you the importance of also maybe making your home or making your space comfortable it's very important so right. it's a lot of people may not be able to do those things or yeah, get yeah. into a quiet place depending but it's surely making us think about how can we perfect these things without these sort of interruptions you mm. know i'm sorry i interrupted you Rajendra. no i was just saying that um in doing this lecture series, one of the things that we've done is knowing your audience or audience analysis. Um, but I was, I was just um, indicating that perhaps in business, there's a different type of knowing or a different level of knowing um, yeah. as an expectation based on what you were saying earlier. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So surveying them would, is, is sort of important. And we were talking about this before yesterday, Rajendra, when you said you sort of, you had surveys and they would sort of give you the demographics so the age um, of the people, uh, sex, that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, this is important to know, and, and it's important for, and it's depending on your topic and what your aim is again, depends on what questions you're going to ask before, and it helps you tailor your presentation. So, uh, do a discovery call. A lot of people absolutely think that this discovery call is like a telemarketer call, and you don't do that in business at all because it totally irritates people, uh, depending on the level that you're dealing with. So you, you will have the email addresses. So you can send an email and say, do you have 15 minutes to talk? And that way, depending on how good you are with your communication, you, you gauge what that person's pressure points are. You gauge what their problem is in their organization. What, what do you want to sell them? So with that feeling, you can tailor your presentation to suit. Social media. Now, a lot of people have a lot of pet peeves about social media. We know the dangers of social media. We know how ridiculous it sometimes gets. But social media is very, very important in knowing your audience. Um, LinkedIn is, is, is very quickly can become um, just like Facebook. And, and I hate to say Tinder, but I've gotten ridiculous uh, uh, messages on LinkedIn as well. But, but um, social media you can use to know your audience you can know people will share articles you will be able to see what they're interested in what they're passionate about and you tailor it to suit a lot of people have that are in business have a professional profile on and you can even check their Facebook because a lot of people will actually even voice it and I've statistically 80% of and in Trinidad human resource professionals will check your Facebook when you apply for a job and that's just fact which is why people have to be careful what you post or what you share but they do check they, they check because they want to know you so this is a great tool to know your audience um because i'm not too familiar with linkedin um just just in a sentence or two it uh, i i understand it to be like a a professional social media it, do people yeah, put up yeah. their cvs there or not, it's, not really it's very your CV, it's more in a bulleted point. So you put your position. Sometimes you put certain qualifications on. Mm. So a lot of people headhunt using LinkedIn because it's a professional. Okay. It's meant to be a professional network. Some people don't use it okay. to be a, a professional network, but um, it's really meant to be that. And you have right. to be more careful on who you add on LinkedIn because it is professional. It's meant to um, be that. Uh, just on this um, issue of social media, it just reminds me, of course, um, that uh, medics and um, healthcare professionals, they have um, platforms that are designed for medical professionals to share information sometimes on case studies. So they have uh, their own social media and um, communication yeah. kind of uh, apps and things for that kind of thing, <clears throat> where patient confidentiality is particularly important. In research, of course, we have... Um, various platforms as well where people share research interests and upload their kind of latest data 
and that kind of thing in an open source way. So there are apps, you know, for different types of professional. And as you're saying, LinkedIn is one of those that yes. uh, is particular to the business environment. Yes. Right. Got you. Right. And it, I mean, a lot of people shy away from, from using social media, but again, knowing who you're dealing with, and I mean, you can pretend a lot of people are not who they are on social media in real life, but it does, you do get to know people's interests and what they care about, what they're mm. upset about. And, and that's why, you know, it's important to use it. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. Yeah. Any anyone got any ideas or thoughts on use of social media? I mean, also people. A lot of people now they write blogs about what they're passionate about, and you can find a lot of blogs. And it depends on what they write about. You you know what if it's technology, if you're selling a solution, a lot of IT techs. Um, and it's important. Like, uh, and I will, and I will come back to that in that. It's important, it's so important to know your audience because um, in my experience selling an IT solution, as a salesperson, I would not, if I'm presenting to a group of IT techs, IT technicians, IT managers, they're very highly technical. And as a salesperson, I'm not technical. I'm there to sell the product. I may not be able to answer certain questions. That's why knowing your audience is so important. So if I know they're going to be very technical questions, I usually carry an engineer. So you can prepare and carry someone to answer those questions for you, depending on your audience. If they're CEOs and they're not too technical, they may just think about the cost of that item and not ask those technical questions which is why it's so important to know your audience because it can it can be the differentiating factor in whether somebody buys your product okay right again so this is just the same thing it's it's doing your homework what what are the person's current role is important what are their past experiences what are the other companies they've worked for what are their pressure points? What what upsets them? What and it's all going to be social media is great. Get personal. Um, I find it fantastic when you have that time before even a presentation to meet your audience, to stand by the door when they're registering and greet them. It's very very important to connect with your audience because it helps you sell what you are. And you're selling yourself, selling your message, not necessarily selling. You're not always going to sell a product, but you're going to sell your message. What is that motivating factor? Connecting with that audience is so important. Uh, quick question. Pressure point is, is, is what? Pressure point is what pisses them off, really. Oh. <laughs> okay. Why, why, okay, so this is in case... Is that, why is it particularly what important? Is, what is a, what, if you're selling a product and what is the problem, they may be, they may be facing a certain problem in their, in their organization. Maybe they're losing information. And I keep going back to technology because that's my experience. Um, mm. Suppose uh, uh, where climate change is concerned, we're having a lot of hurricanes. Maybe right. they have to prep for disaster recovery. Where is mm. that information? And that is worrying them. That is concerning to them. What are they going to do if they lose all this information because they don't have storage for that information? So at Trinidad is an extremely, extremely small country. The world is actually, now I'm learning even more. Networking is so important. To know, mm. You're going to know, people are going to know the industry. You're going to ask someone, okay, I'm having this meeting with the um, do you know anything? Do you know what's going on with the company? Do you know what they're looking for? So, so that's what I mean. If what is upsetting, what's, what problem are they trying to solve in their organization? And what is the solution that you have that can fix right. it? So, so the hot point is what is going to tip them over to a sale? Is it yes. and a, pressure, and yes. a pressure point is what is going to turn them off? No, it, it, no. It's, it's almost the same thing. You know, you know, the, um, what's in hot points is, are really what's important to them. Okay. What are the person's pressure points? As it's something that frustrates them, something that, that they, they don't have a solution for, but they're looking for it. Oh, I get you. Okay. Yeah. So they're both really the same. Yes. The kind of the tipping point towards a, towards something positive yes. then. Okay. Yes. And I mean, something can possibly even be irritating 
to a person or they've had a bad experience with some product you've been dealing with in the past and you kind of want it'll show you what not to touch on got you if you learn that don't touch this this is gonna this is gonna lose me it don't don't even venture here that's so important about knowing your it's so important about knowing your audience and know what they know so and and that helps in um, your questions. What are your questions going to be like? So you don't want to be unprepared. You're going to have backup if you need to, technical backup. But it's important to um, that somebody doesn't hit you with something that about what you're you're discussing that you have no idea about. So do your research. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just another thing. I suppose sure. I should have asked this much earlier, but um, like. In these kinds of presentations, you tend to have a small audience, I suppose. What what would what would be the kind of numbers? Um, you can have up to fifty people, and up you can have oh, up okay. to ten people. It really depends on on what what your message is. So you could be uh, doing a sales call to fifty people, a, a pitch. Yeah, or, you can. Really, you okay. can. It depends on what you're doing. Um, mm. A lot of people like those social gatherings. Sometimes you invite people to cocktails, and it's a huge cocktail event to present a new product and it can be mm. over i've been in presentations that have been up to 200 people right but right. that's, so that's quite that's, extravagant you know when so you that's more, that. is that more of a launch though of a product yes already, yes okay. yes that is mm. more of a launch but then you have the experts that are sort of walking the floor after integrating with your uh, a very very big sales pitch really uh, ah, integrating with you. your audience to talk to them more about it and answer their questions Got you. Right. So um, this is why you use visual aid. Um, you have, there's a greater understanding in simplicity, which I, I like about visual aid. When you use visual aid, it simplifies everything. You can use, the thing is, a graphic is universal. So you can communicate your message by using visual aid and certain graphics. and it's just such a simple way to relay your message, uh, no matter what they, where their geographic location is, language, or office environment. Um, for for example, um, sales statistics. Um, having someone read sales stats can be yawn-inducing, I I should say, right? But broadcasting the same data on a leaderboard or even on a pie chart or a a bar chart to make it just it it could stay that memory can stay in their in their head using that visual aid it can be beautiful it is more impactful it stays with you rather than you if you give me a 10-page report and now we have those um those uh infographics where you intersect the information with the visual yes definitely um also it it's more engaging as well to use those infographics. Um, mm. and, and a lot of the majority of people are visual learners. So usual, using that in your office is, is, is a great way to make sure everybody's completely understanding whatever you're trying to communicate with them. Um, so, and it, it's really great for s- summing up long-winded stats, long-winded anything, large scale numbers, visuals are the best way to just break it down. Um, and I love pie charts and, and by, by, by charts as well, you know, especially because I'm not a numbers person. So that, that speaks to me, you know, in a different way. Um, also, symbols have the ability to transfer in information quicker than words. And again, it, it reaches a lot larger audience because symbols are, are just universal. Um, resources. Now, Visual communication can save a lot on on office resources and and the amount of time you spend on creating a shorter to the point message will be a lot less than if you were to write out pages and pages of documents and not to mention printing and and, and the cost of all of that, you know, so it does save on a lot of resources when you do a presentation visually. And again, it, it imprints in your mind. It's just more memorable. Right, body language, my favorite. Um, body language is so important for business presentation and effective movement and gestures for public speaking is it's so important which is why I love to to say to record yourself you know um, use your on a stage so you, you're a bit of an actor you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have bad days when you're gonna have to 
have to have these presentations. Something might throw you off. Um, you might get a call that your, your child is probably not feeling well or something about your dog. It affects you and it throws you. So you have to learn to use that space like an actor to because you're still controlling the room. Um, Tammy, sorry yes. to um, sure. cut in. Um, I'm just monitoring the time. And I yes. realize because we started late, um, we may be... May have yes. to oh, kind of wrap up in the next slide sure, or two sure. and then Great. Yes. just allow a moment or two for questions. Sure, sure. Let me just wrap up because it's very basic. So we know we know what, what we're going to do about body language and how important it is. Um, this is just com common mistakes. Crossing your arms. You do not ever want to cross your arms. You can. It, it comes across as cocky, which is the worst thing you could do when you're present. You're presenting. Bad posture fidgeting smile even though it's unless you're delivering bad news you smile right so i think this right so summing this up it's very it's very quick um you're just gonna it's very simple you know who what where who what and why really you're asking is who is your audience what is your content and why why are you presenting what is your end result what is the message and what you're going to leave your audience with so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I was making notes I went along and I, I got a whole list of things that sure. um, I think are very specific to uh, business presentations. Right. Um, I'm wondering if anyone in the audience, any student or uh, any teacher, I see Aaliyah with us, um, has anything that they want to ask or, or add? Any questions, anyone? Um, let me just ask one one quick question then as we wrap up. Um, do you think in Trinidad and Tobago there's a specific way of presenting that you've noticed in the course of your professional career that um, is distinctly our own and works to our advantage um, when presenting to maybe international audiences and conversely things that may be um, would be unappealing or misread by an international audience. Uh, have you noticed anything like that? It's really part of, you know, our culture is that we're very handsy. We absolutely love, I've oh, noticed, for okay. a lot of Trinidadians, we speak mm. with our hands. And I mean, we, sometimes we love it, but a lot of professionals internationally, they just mm. think it's, we're all over the place, you know? So it's sometimes, it, it relates to a very, Caribbean audience and, and I've noticed it with, with Jamaicans I've noticed with where I, I've noticed it it depends on it's so such a cultural thing with gender it's so amazing mm. um, because I've noticed a lot of Jamaicans are very loud they, and I can be extremely loud people need to tell me to be quiet and people sometimes they respond to that and it really right. depends on your message what is your message are you going to motivate are you mm. going to and it really we're lovely people I think when we're talking I, I'm I'm a hand gesture, but but from my reading on presentation, it really is not probably the best way, depending on what your message is. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, just uh, um, tomorrow, you're getting some thank yous from people, yes, so it was very informative. So I appreciate your audience. So that's absolutely, you. absolutely lovely. Um, I think because um, in the absence of any other questions, I think because I know students are getting ready to do their presentations yeah. now. Um, we could we could probably leave it at that. Is there anything you wanted to say to to summarise, Tammy? Or well, no, I, I I'm knowing that um, I'm remembering my student days. I just mm. want to send these lovely people off and wish you good luck. Thank yeah? you, thank you so much. Thank you for today. Thank you. And um, yes, we'll be in touch. All, All right, right, thank please. you, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. All right, thank you. All right, so um, students, now I guess we can stop recording, Tam. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect.